Moments of Inspiration with Pastor Darlene, right here on LICMC Radio. Moments of Inspiration with Pastor Darlene, right here on LICMC Radio. Well, praise the Lord, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Moments of Inspiration with yours truly, Pastor Darlene Bell. Yes, I'm co-pastor of Exciting Life Christian Center, along with my wonderful sister, Pastor Sarah Little Taylor. Listen, my friends, first of all, shout out to LICMC.net. Shout out to you, London, Washington, and your adorable, beautiful, co-laborer, uh, <laughs> uh, Irene C. Biz TV, Washington. Listen, I have a good word today, today, today. So grab your pencil, your your ink pens and paper, those that still like to use notebooks. I do. But I know some folks like to use their text. They like to use iPads. But this message here is note-worthy taking. Uh, let me just get that a little clear. This message is worthy to take notes. Because it's not a message as usual. This stuff is going to strengthen you. It's going to help catapult, catapult you to your next level in Jesus Christ. So I have, because when I teach, I give a lot of scripture. So that's why I want uh, to make sure that you write them down. And just in case, you, you may say, well, Pastor, wait, wait, wait. You can always go back and get the scriptures later. So I have a wonderful title that the Lord has given me. I'll say it's fresh off the heavenly press. Now, the title of this message is, It's Time to Strengthen and Refresh Your Faith Even the More. I'll give that title again. It's time to strengthen and refresh your faith even the more. You know, in our lives, we have to always, um, you know, keep things updated. We have to, uh, you know, sometimes things will expire like licenses. So you have to go and get those licenses, you know, renewed. And so a lot of times in our walk as a Christian, we have to just renew our own faith. You know, David encouraged himself. Glory to God. So it's time to strengthen and refresh your faith even the more and you know i'm so thankful for this platform that uh the lord is using london um washington to get the word out amen amen so the first scripture that i want you to write down is ephesians 3 and 20 now if you look at the word faith uh ephesians 3 and 20 just is going to give you highlights of faith. But the word faith itself means from Hebrews 11 and 1, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. I think all of us learned that as a child in church. But uh, some of the other translations says faith is your title deed. All right, to make it even clearer and more simple, faith is knowing you have it, even though you don't see it with your five senses. Can you see it with your eyeballs, your physical eyeballs? No. Can you hear it with your ears? No. Can you smell it, taste it, touch it? No. But God's word has said it, and that's what I'm basing my faith on it. And many times that's what we have to do. We have to stand on God's word. And as we talked about on the table of prayer earlier today on London Washington show, we have to wait on God. But let's get back here to Ephesians 3.20. It says, now unto him, and that's a capital H-I-M. <laughs> Amen. I'm not talking about a, a little small H-I-M. Now unto him that is able. Now, there's more to this scripture. But let me let, put a pause button. Put a pause button because I just want to dissect that word, able. You know what? And when we can just learn about this, and we really could just say, okay, the show is in, but we're not going to do that. What does the word able mean? Well, I'm so glad that you add, that you ask. Amen. You know, um, a, a similar meaning of 
other word is called a synonym. As many of you know, I am a retired, happily, <laughs> retired uh, elementary school teacher. Well, with Detroit Public Schools for 31 years, and I've taught uh, personally about four years in a private school. So I've got a good 35 or good 36 years of teaching up under my belt, which I love. I knew that was my call when I was a little girl, third, second grader. So, but many times when I would teach my little second and third graders uh, lessons, I would use synonyms and antonyms. Synonym means a word that has similar meaning. So let's just look at able. What, what does the word able mean? Well, it means proficient, having proficiency, having the power, the skill, the means, the opportunity to do something, uh, being an expert, being strong. See, all of this tells you, this is describing what God is able it means knowledgeable, means gifted, qualified, fit, suitable, woo, competent, efficient, effective. And then I, I could go on and on. So we say, God, you are able. We say, Lord, you are the expert in my life, Lord. You are competent. You are, you have the ability, the proficiency to bless me. Now, before we go on with the scripture, let's, what is the, the antonym of able? I'm so glad you asked. <laughs> because uh, sometimes the opposite of something can help you understand what the word itself means. Well, the opposite of being able is weak. And see, when you doubt God, this is what you, in essence, you're saying, God, you are, let me give all those antonyms, weak, feeble. Powerless, Woo. incompetent, incapable, unreliable, inefficient, unqualified, unproficient. And we know God is none of that. So we've got to determine that you are going to believe his word, stand firm on it, or not believe. And I know we as believers... We choose to believe. Now, let's get back to this scripture. <laughs> Ephesians 3 and 20 says, Not unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Now, see, that last part is important because some somebody may say, Oh, I, I have a genie in the bottle. We got no, he's not your genie in the bottle. And he's not going to just, uh, this doesn't apply if you ask him something erroneous or something that's not in line with his word. According to the power, that means your power source is connected to the Lord Jesus Christ. His word, his capability, and nothing else. Glory to God. I'm going to read the scripture again. Now to him that is able to do exceeding abundantly. That means go beyond abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works within us. Now, my question is, how is your power line? What level is your faith tank on? Now, you don't have to answer, Pastor Darlene, but if you had to score your faith tank from a level of 1 to 10, what would your number be? And only you can answer that. Glory to God. I know mine is on 10 plus. Amen. <laughs> Let me just say this. Keep your faith tank built. And the only way you do that is by always rehearsing the word of God. You know, we're human. So if you feel like, oh, Lord, I just, I got to get my, my faith tank built. It's okay. But don't talk yourself out of your own blessing. Hello. And don't let others talk you out of your blessing. And definitely not the enemy. So this says he's able to do exceed abundantly above all we could ask or think according to power that works within us. What is it that you are believing God for? We're going to take a little, a little pause, but then I have some more good stuff to share. But lift your hands up to the Lord right now. Come on, lift it up, lift it up, lift it up. Let me tell you, God is able, woman. God is able, man. Whatever it is that you're going through, look, focus right now on the efficient one, the proficient one, the competent one, the capable one. And in the name of Jesus, Father, we touch and agree Lord, move on behalf of that woman, this woman too, Lord, 
in the name of Jesus. Lord, we know that you are able. You are God that has all ability. Hallelujah. Heal, Lord, that woman, that man that needs healing, Lord. Somebody need a door open. Open the door. Somebody need a way to be made. Lord, make the way now in Jesus' name. Somebody need a situation turned around. Turn around in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. You know, this moment of inspiration, I like to liken it to being a faith tank, amen, oil station. And we're saying, Lord, thank you, fill us up premium, please. <laughs> Woo-wee. Here's another scripture to help refresh, to help strengthen, to refresh and strengthen your faith even more. Luke one thirty seven. for nothing will be impossible with God. Okay, here's another one. Write this down, 2 Corinthians 9 and 8. Write it down. Come on. Can't be a lazy bone. 2 Corinthians 9 and 8. And God is what? Able Woo. to make all grace. Grace is every favor and earthly blessing. God is able to make all grace come to you in what? Abundance. So that you may always have all sufficiency in all things that you may abound in every good work. Can I give you a little reminder on today who God is? He is El Shaddai. You say El Shaddai, well, most of Christians don't. He is God that's what, not just enough. He's a God that's what, more than enough. And you know, if the enemy or, or unbelief does not get at your door, you know, you have to let the, the, the enemy or, or the circumstance up. No, my God is El Shaddai. He is not El Chipo. He wants to bless you. He's not El Lacko. He's not lacking. But my God, oh, Jesus, is El Shaddai. He's a God that's more than enough. We have to keep encouraging ourselves. Now, what David did, he encouraged himself. Glory to God. And that's why faith comes by hearing constantly. Oh, I, I heard that scripture before. Yeah, my mama taught me that when I was knee high to whatever people say. <laughs> no, baby, listen. <laughs> you have to hear the word of God constantly. Amen. Get the, get the unbelief and doubt out of your ears. You know, that's why people say, well, thanks to God, some of them are so loud. You know what? Yeah. We are loud. The Bible said, clap your hands. Oh, you be with the voice of a triumph. You know, because the enemy wants to be loud in your ears, so he trying to make you quiet. Come on now. Romans 4, 21. Write this down. And being fully persuaded that God was able and mighty to keep his word. This is referring to Abraham. And to do what he had promised, he was fully persuaded. It said he gave. He gave glory to God. But it said Abraham was fully persuaded. He wasn't looking at his circumstance. He wasn't looking at, oh, my God, you know, I'm, I'm a hundred, near a hundred, near a near hundred. Oh, it's not going to happen. Even like trying to take matters in their hand, that's a whole different lesson. But Abraham knew if God said, you're going to be the father of many nations, Abraham was persuaded, and he just began to give God the glory. Hallelujah. Let's look at Ephesians 1.19. The Amplified says, and so that you can know and understand what is immeasurable and unlimited and surpassing greatness of his what power in and for us who believe as demonstrated in the working of his mighty strength. My friend, my friend, my friend. Friend, listen, why don't, let's take this a step higher. Let's decree. Oh, and I feel the power of the Lord working in this place. Listen, let's decree and declare tonight is my night. Come on, say it. Come on, say it, woman. Say it, man. Tonight is my night of victory. Tonight woo, is my night of a glorious breakthrough. Glory to God. Say that God is opening up some special doors for me. You, that's right, for me. And say this, you know, he's even creating, yeah, that will shot some new doors for 
me. You know, keep the word of God in your mouth. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Jeremiah 32, 17 says, Ah, Lord God, behold, thou that has made the heaven and the earth by thy great power and stretched out arm. Is there anything too hard for thee? Let me ask you that. What's too hard for God? Can you, is it one thing you say, well, God can do this, but he can't, no. <laughs> he made us, he made everything. So if someone created, my God, you know they're going to have all power over it. Thank you, Jesus. Now, Jeremiah 32, 27, behold, I am the Lord, thy God. I am the Lord, the God of what all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? That was Jeremiah 32, 27. God himself is speaking. First Corinthians, write it down, 4, 13. I can do all things through Christ. For what? He gives me strength. So as a believer, everything we're doing is through. It's through the strength of God. It's not through our own uh, strength. And God, I'm not saying we have to be a lazy Christian. No. Go and be the best, the best that you can be and what God has called you to do. It's fine if you feel led to go get an education. Of course, I'm up for education. I have a bachelor's and a master's degree. You know, a teacher. Hello. And I have an honorary doctorate, um, you know, for from uh, Solid Rock Fellowship. I have a uh, pastor and, and all those, you know, offices. But, yeah, go be the best that you can be hallelujah and know that you can do it hallelujah first corinthians 2 and 9 but as it is written i have not seen whew, and that's e-y-e so he said, the lord is saying your eye have not seen nor your ear heard neither have it entered into the heart of man the things which god has prepared for them that what love him do not stop don't you know, discouragement can't come along the road of life. What you going to do, stay there and camp out? No. David said, I walk through the valley. Not, oh, I, you know what? I had a few disappointments. Now I'm just going to camp out here. Oh, well, I give up. No. Through, baby. Walk through. Walk through. Walk through God. is what he said. The Lord is with me. Glory to God. And I love the first part of Psalm 23. One, he says, the Lord is. My shepherd not was, or what well, he might be depends on his mood. No, he is my shepherd. Why? So therefore, well, I have no one. And another a standard a trans Bible translation says, the Lord is my shepherd. I have no lack. Amen. Glory to God. Psalm 36, 79, write this down. How excellent is thy loving kindness. Oh, God. Therefore, the children of men put their trust. Their firm belief, their reliability, or their strength, they put their trust in you and under the shadow of thy wing. Once again, to those that may be tuning in right now to Moments of Inspiration with Pastor Darlene Bell, the name of this sermon is, it's time, or this word, it's time to strengthen and refresh your faith even the more. You know, the whole title of the show. It's to encourage, and week after week, and week after, it'll, and you'll be coming to an infusion state, infusion of encouragement, infusion of hope. It don't say um, <laughs> moments of, I guarantee I'm going to discourage you uh, with past darling God. No, inspire you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Woo-wee. Um, Psalm 37, 8 says, they shall be abundantly satisfied. Now, a lot of the choice words that God used abundantly satisfied with the what sadness of thy house thou shalt make them drink of the river of thy pleasure verse 9 says for with thee is the fountain of life you know so many people going everywhere well i want some peace so somebody say yeah break break this branch off of this tree and rub some mustard I, I, i'm giving a silly example Rub some mustard on it, put a little ketchup on it, and child, wave it in the air. You're going to have some peace. Okay. Well, it didn't work. Yeah, I'm sure it did. <laughs> you know, listen, people are going everywhere. I be searching, searching, searching. Listen, my friend, you want peace. Do you really want? We're talking about the, the, the uh, tranquility. 
reality and on a daily basis. Not like, oh, I had a good day today. No, every day, honey. Peace, the Isaiah 26 and 3 says, the peace that passes. No, he said, I'll keep you in perfect peace because your mind is stayed on me. Amen, amen, amen. Oh, glory to God. And let's look at, I want to go back to that verse 9 of Psalm 36, verse 9. For with thee is the fountain of life. In thy light shall we see light. So God is whatever you need, my friend. He's the fountain of life. He's strength. He's joy. You know, people try to go to the maybe the uh, drugstore. Well, I, I like uh, some peace and uh, give me a prescription for joy. And probably the farmers probably say, honey, <laughs> I can't help you because I'm looking for it myself. Go to Jesus. You know, some people say, well, that's old school and outdated. No, it is not. Well, that's just a no. It's, we're not talking about religion. Glory to God. We are talking about relationship on today. Woo, we, John 10, 10 said the thief comes not but for to steal, to kill, and destroy. But Jesus Christ said, I come that you might have life, and you might have it more abundantly or to the fullness. Romans 8, 28, and we know that all things work together for good to those who are called of God, those called according. But those who love God, you're called according to his purpose. Romans 8, 28, we'll read that again. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, those who call that are called according to his purpose. And in Romans 8, 37, say, nay, in all these things, we're more than conquerors. Through him, there it is. Through him, come on, refresh your faith right now. Let's, let me tell you something. That God has a tailor-made, uh, we've been on this uh, thing for a minute, too, at my church, on um, my radio shows. God has a tailor-made blessing, miracle and breakthrough with your name on it. You can just start decreeing and declaring that. You know, a tailor-made, when you think about something that's tailor-made, it's just not a one-size-fit-all, because all of us need something different from the Lord. Amen. But I'm talking to the children of God. Once you are born again, once you have accepted Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, you can expect to be blessed. When you think about something that's tailor made, it's a garment that's been especially made for a particular customer. And a tailor is someone that's, that's an expert. They know how to make custom made designs, the right measure, individualized, designed just for you. Glory to God. Don't you know God's got a blessing? Well, with your name on it, reach up and say, Lord, thank you. I'll take my tailor made blessing. Hallelujah. Opposite of tailor made is a one size ready all, a one size fit all. So look, look, the potter is here. Jesus Christ is the potter. He's the tailor. Lift your hand, say, Lord, I just thank you. I thank you for. And then you just begin to, to bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Begin to thank God in advance. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Reflect on past victories. If he did it before, my friends, he will do it again. And then reflect in examples from the Bible. David slew Goliath. And the children of Israel crossed over the Red Sea. You know, and, and, and uh, the old enemy tried to come and God drowned them. Jesus healed the sick. He raised the dead. Hallelujah. God has paid the price for your healing. He's paid the price for your happiness. He's paid the price that you can have life, abundant life, while you are headed toward eternal life. That he'll enlarge your territory. He'll strengthen you, give you the capacity not only to be blessed, but to be a blessing. Glory to God. So if you don't know this Jesus I've been talking about, his word, let's we say a little prayer right now. Get to know him right now. Because this message really was for the believer. Amen. But you can become a believer right now. Are you born again? You, you may you say, I don't know. I, I go to church. I usher. I sing the choir. I'm checking the preacher's hand. Okay, those are all good things. But have you asked Jesus Christ to come in and be your Lord and your Savior? You've got to be born again. And you look, whosoever will, come as you are. Don't say, well, I, I don't feel I'm qualified. You're qualified. Jesus said, John 3, 16, God so loved the world. He gave his only begotten son. And whosoever, are you breathing? You whosoever, believe in him, should not perish, but have everlasting life. Let's pray this prayer right now. Father, 
in the name of Jesus. Come on, say it, say it. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He died on the cross just for me. Put your name in. So I was like, that's darling Bell. They put him in a grave, but he's no longer there. He has risen from the dead. God raised him from the dead. He is alive. Come on, every man, woman, boy, girl, pray this prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, come into my life. Come into my heart. Save me. Forgive me of all my sins. Thank you, Lord, for washing away my sins and coming into my life right now. And according to your word, I am right now born again. I thank you, Lord. My name is written in the last book of life in Jesus' name. My friend, um, I, I pray that Lord cultivate them, strengthen them in Jesus' name. Find you a good Bible-believing church. Amen. And if you want to uh, write to me, email. My email address is Pastor Darlene Bell. All lowercase letters, Pastor Darlene Bell at gmail.com. Amen. Uh, Pastor Darlene Bell at gmail.com. And I also have a YouTube that's entitled Pastor Darlene Bell. And so you can come there and get, get inspired. Get more inspiration. Amen. And amen. Glory to God. So listen, God, bless everybody. Keep your faith infused. Keep your, your faith strengthened. And go with God because he certainly will always go with you. I love you, but God loves you. More and know that the best is yet to come. Love everybody. Moments of inspiration with Pastor Darlene right here on LICMC Radio.